G'day guys. Today I want to talk about how I added compact flash storage to my IBM 5150. I know there are commercial products that can do this just with a plug and play sort of arrangement like the low-tech XTIDE and whatnot, but I like to try to do things myself. You know, I, I like to try to figure out how it works, do a bit of soldering, do a bit of messing around, troubleshooting, you know, all that cool stuff. So I thought, you know what, I'll get the ISA ROM board from Lowtech and try and work out the IDE side of things for myself. So I started looking around, tried to figure out what I had that I might be able to work with. I found this ISA IDE slash floppy controller that had the IDE portion built up using 74 series logic. I thought, oh, you beauty. I'll be able to reverse engineer that and maybe even it'll just work the way it is. Nice and simple. It's not doing any 16-bit functionality that I can see. The 16-bit uh, data lines from the IDE connector are just routed straight to the edge connector of the card, so it should be the perfect candidate, or so I thought. So I flashed the XT-IDE BIOS to the ROM card, installed everything, found a smallish hard disk that I thought, you know what, this is, it's smaller, but it's old, but it's not too old, but it's not too new. Connected it all up and nothing worked. Of course, to try to research this, I thought, well, who better to ask than the Vintage Computer Forums? So I made a post on there and found out that the 16-bit card in 8-bit computer arrangement will not work on the 5150 because of the size of the reserved I.O. port ranges, which are different on the 5150 compared to the 5160 and basically any clone that you can think of. This is why on cards like the XTIDE, the I.O. ports are configured as 300 and 308 hex, whereas on an XT or any other system, you would normally use 1F0 and 3F0. At this point, I thought, well, that's it. I'll have to buy a card. But before I did that, I thought, for a challenge, let's see if I can manipulate the bits and make one value into another value. And I did. I came up with this translation map that I could build using a single chip, a single hex inverter chip. Here's a demonstration. I cut into the address lines on the adapter card and inserted an inverter so when the A9 signal comes in off the bus, it's inverted and then put into the card where A3 should be. Some address lines go straight through. Some of them are just swapped around. These ones in the middle here, they're all inverted. We can see it in action up here. 300 comes in from the CPU. It goes through the translation. But on the card, it looks like the CPU asked for 1F0, and so it responds appropriately. We bump this up to 308 for the command block address, but on the card, that looks like 3F0. Everything works as expected. So now I'll show you how I physically put it together, and then finally show you the beast in action. So you can see here where I've lifted the pins up on the IC that was originally on the card. I've soldered wires into the holes where the pins used to be, and attached wires to the legs of the ICs. I picked out the necessary ones, and routed them across to this chip over here, which is a 74LS04 hex inverter. This does in hardware what my Excel spreadsheet before was doing in software, which was taking some of the zeros, changing them into ones, and vice versa. Below where the hex inverter chip is, you can see the footprint where the floppy controller chip used to be. I removed that because the floppy disable jumper wasn't always working, and sometimes I would get strange results. These went away when I removed the floppy chip. Now that you've seen how it's built, let's power it up. Here's the card, let's install this sucker. On the end of this IDE cable, there's an IDE to compact flash adapter. Nothing special there. I just mounted it on the back of the case for easy access.
And uh, there you have it. That's an IBM 5150 booting from a compact flash card attached to a ISA IDE card modified to work at a completely different base address. That's pretty awesome if you ask me. Another upgrade I blessed my 5150 with is a CGA card. And what better to pair with a CGA card than a brilliant sharp Sony PVM monitor that can do TTL, RGB and composite video. It's the best of both worlds. So here's a little bit of Magiduck and a little bit of 8088 miles an hour showing off toggling between RGB and composite. Thank you very much for watching. There'll be a video in the next couple of weeks showing off a couple more of the 5150 upgrades. So I will see you then.